So it is currently Sunday, May 14th, Mother's Day. I didn't get to do Mother's Day things. I was at work and I should be home right now. I should already be home packing for Iceland, but I'm in Savannah, Georgia. In typical aviation fashion, we have to expect the unexpected. <laughs> First, we went to Sorry Charlie's where I had the most amazing shrimp and grits I've ever had. So after we found out we didn't have to work that day, we decided to roam around Savannah. We ended up finding the Savannah Bee Company, which has all things bees, mead, honey, body care, skin care, whatever you want. I absolutely love mead. We do mead at Renaissance Festival every time we go. So I was super excited to find this and decided we should do a mead tasting. We got to try six or 12 different meads. I can't really remember. This was one of my favorites, but I actually didn't buy it. I bought two other ones to bring home. I don't drink often, but when I do drink, I do like to have something on the sweeter side. Mead is usually very sweet, so it's a sipper, but it's usually really good. After we left there, we roamed around a little bit more and found the Georgia Tasting Room. They had these wine slushy slash smoothie things and then also regular wine tastings. These were absolutely amazing also. Like I said, I'm not a big drinker, but I love sampling different wines, meads, things like that. All of these were really, really good. My personal favorite was this Pino, Pino Colada. It was legit a pina colada tasting wine, and I wish I had room in my suitcase to bring it home. You can carry drinks to go there, so I got me a little creamsicle, dreamsicle drink. And then it was time for a snack, so we headed to Coco and Moss Sushi Bar. You know I love me some sushi. This Philadelphia roll was so good. And this was an alcoholic beverage, but it was very similar to a Starbucks refresher. Originally, I should have been in Kansas City tonight, but I got rid of my Kansas City so I could get off work tonight and leave for Iceland tomorrow because I wanted the extra day there in case flights were bad or whatever. Cool, got rid of that, no big deal. I was supposed to deadhead back, so just be a passenger on the flight back from Savannah to Houston at like 5 p.m. today. Well, there were storms all in Houston and our dead had canceled. So we're stuck here for like 30 hours, which no big deal. We were downtown anyways, and you know, we were just getting lunch, but then we could go like bounce around and have drinks and it was really cool. Um, it was a lot of fun. So basically work told me that they were gonna get me on the 7 a.m. flight in the morning. They tweaked our schedules and they're like, we're gonna get you out. They told me, hopefully, we can get you out in the morning, Monday morning. I was like, hopefully. I've never been told hopefully. So they adjusted my schedule. It was supposed to put me on the 7 a.m. flight with the crew back to Houston, Monday morning. No big deal. I could rush home, pack everything up if I needed to, and then head out and try to figure out whatever route I needed to take to get to Reykjavik. Well, it's... Um, it was about 10 p.m. I look at my schedule. Still don't have a confirmation number for my dead hub. Call crew scheduling. Like, hey, what's going on? They were like, so we can't get you out until Tuesday. I was like, excuse me? What do you mean, Tuesday? Like, now I'm going into my second off day. Because I was supposed to be off on Monday. I was supposed to get home tonight, Sunday night. And I was supposed to be off on Tuesday all the way until, like, next Tuesday or Wednesday. They were like, yeah, so we can't get you on the flight because it's oversold. I was like, okay, um, so what about the rest of the crew? And they're like, well, because they were gonna be working a flight when we got back or they were supposed to, they're like, we can get them back. But because you were done and going into off days, we can't help you until Tuesday. Cool. Become a flight attendant, they say. It'll be fun, they say. I will say I thrive on chaos but not when it interferes with my plans. So that's the problem. So here's the intro to the Iceland vlog. I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna get there, when I'm gonna get there. 
we're just gonna just, you know, embrace the chaos though. So a little bit after that, I don't know who heard my complaints, but they ended up putting me on a flight to Chicago and then connecting me through Chicago to get to Houston instead of putting me on the direct. It got me home just way later than planned, but hey, at least I wasn't stuck there until Tuesday. All right, it is 9.25 p.m. I am finally home. We landed into Houston a little after 5 p.m. I made a few stops on my home, got home about two hours ago, and I have been trying to figure out how to pack. And I am lost because it's supposed to be rainy and cold all week. And the cold isn't a big deal, it's the rain. So trying to figure out if I need to bring like extra, extra clothes or if I can do laundry at the hotel when I figure out my hotel, which I'm not gonna book until I get on the flight because if the flight fills up and I can't get there, then I've wasted all this money. So this is the joy of taking trips standby. It's stressful. No checking bags, I can, but I probably am gonna have to three-leg it to get there. So if I check a bag, my bag might never, never make it. So I'm trying to fit everything I need and a carry-on and trying to figure out what all I need. And it's not like I have the carry-on plus like another backpack to store stuff in because it's my disc golf bag. So I'm able to take way less than like I should. Okay, ignore the annoying loud dryer that is on its second cycle through because nothing is drying. I am almost done packing. It's been difficult. First of all, let's talk about my packing. This is my raincoat that's in the bag for another raincoat that I'm not taking. This is a bag full of things that I might need, like, readily available. I'm bringing a Chicks Chasing Chains flight towel to give away to one of my card mates. This is my pack of clothes. I may take some things out, and I actually have to add some stuff. So, like, I haven't put PJs in there yet, so that's a problem. So, these are doing really good. I actually got these from bathing suits that I ordered, and I kept them, and they're really great travel bags. And I can rearrange this better, but some things I'm actually bringing this trip that I don't normally bring, I have an umbrella because it's supposed to rain the entire time. This umbrella is super cheap, and it sucks, so if I have to leave it when I leave, no big deal. I got this 12 serving of protein that I'm gonna take with me. I usually don't eat enough protein while I'm traveling. Also, Iceland is pretty expensive. So, I was like, I'll take this with me. That's about a week's worth, honestly, because I usually do a scoop and a half of protein. So that can potentially save me some money. My biggest issue right now is figuring out where to put my shoes. Also, I'm trying to decide which electronics I need. Typically, I don't take my laptop with me, but I really, really, really want to get editing done while I'm there or while I'm just traveling, like while I'm at the airport all day tomorrow and on the way back. But I think I am going to actually take the GoPro, which I don't really use just because the quality is not as good. But if I go to the Blue Lagoon or if I go under any waterfalls or anything, I'm going to want to have the GoPro with me because it can get wet. I'm torn on if I want to take the Pivo with me, which like pivots and follows you. I haven't used it very much, but because I will be traveling solo, it would be cool to have. But I also haven't figured it out yet, so I don't know. My beats are a must and they are going in the front of my little travel bag. Pro tip, if you're traveling, don't forget headphones because the airlines do have headphones sometimes. But if you have an iPhone and you don't have the little adapter and you want to use your phone with the headphones from the airline, they're not going to work. So I always bring that with the adapter in case my beats die. They do use like standard European outlets. So I do have to take some of these. Luckily, I have this USB one and a regular one. Also, I did not realize how minimal I am with makeup until literally today because I have a makeup bag that I carry, but I didn't realize that I only used five things out of it. So that makes life easier because I just have my powder, my eyebrow stuff, and I use two different mascaras and that's it. So that is super easy to just 
put in this bag or put in another bag and be done with it. So in the purse, I've got, like I said, headphones, passport, and wallet. Also, always bring pins if you're going international because you have to usually do customs forms. A lot are going electronic, but just take pins in case. So this little bag I will put in the side pocket of my grip and then I can just easily pull it out whenever I need it. I'm just throwing stuff in here and then I'll have to rearrange it a little bit in the morning. That, eye drops. And after much packing debate, it was finally time for sleep and then wake up and go to the airport. All right, I'm still in Houston. I got here about 10 minutes behind schedule, which after I went through security, did not get on the earlier flights that I was gonna try to connect through. Now we're gonna connect through Minneapolis and then go to Chicago and then hopefully on to Reykjavik. So we'll see how it goes. I am in Minneapolis right now, going to catch my next flight to Chicago. I had to two-leg it, which is pretty typical. Is it already time to board? Anyways, I was worried that I wasn't even gonna get here, even though I had a seat and we were in the air because the guy behind me like had a medical emergency. And so in the middle of the flight, he like, I saw him like stumble and he like hit his head onto the wall going to the bathroom. They had to like catch him. They had to get a doctor to come and like check on him. So I was worried we were gonna have to divert and I wasn't even gonna make it to Minneapolis in time to catch the flight to Chicago. Thankfully, it seemed like everything ended up okay. The EMTs, paramedics did come and get him off the flight first, but we made it. Now I'm here. I was gonna do some video editing, but apparently it's already time to board. Gonna catch that flight. I have a little bit too much baggage, so it's been kind of a pain trying to like finesse it all. And like I said in my previous, or a previous video, the AX grip bag is a little tougher to stuff under the seat on the plane. I'm definitely struggling with baggage. I plan on getting rid of stuff. I've got um, a disc to donate, a flight towel to donate. Um, this is probably the last leg for my Adidas T-Rex, so I might just trash those, especially if they're wet. You know, the protein powder, some other things that I can get rid of. Hopefully on the way back, it will be slightly less painful, mentally painful. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna catch this flight to Chicago. Hopefully it looks like I should get on and then I'll update y'all when I get there. Thankfully, the Minneapolis to Chicago flight went off without a hitch. I made it to Chicago with plenty of time to spare before catching my flight to Reykjavik. By this point, I pretty much knew I was going to get on the flight. There was plenty of open seats. You always get a little bit anxious just because anything can happen, like weight restrictions and whatnot, but I felt pretty confident. I didn't get a first class upgrade, but I did get a window seat with nobody in the middle next to us. Plus it was only a five hour flight anyway, so it really went by fast. For dinner, I got the buttered chicken and I've actually never had buttered chicken before, but it was so good. And if it was that good on a plane, you know it's gotta be good on the ground. One of my favorite things is that first glimpse of a new country you've never flown into before. You never know what it's gonna look like, and it's just such a cool feeling to know you'll be landing in a new place soon. And after all the delays and chaos, I finally made it to Iceland. And make sure to come back for the next video in the Iceland Disc Golf Vlog series.